Right now, at the present moment, we're going to take off where we left off. I sanded all the spots off of the body fill that I used to cover the pinholes. Uh, Jolene cleaned the car off, and she went around and shot a little guide coat, and that's what the guide coat looks like if you want to come over the side. I don't know, you can see it on the back fender, but if you come around, you can see the guide coat on the hood on this part, um, on the side of the fender, and on the side, on the on the bottom of the door and the back fender and that sort of stuff. You can see it, how it's guide coated. Um, what I'm doing on this side over here, I'm trying to, you know, I want to make Jolene's car look as nice as possible in the quickest mount or the quickest time possible. So what I'm doing right now, I've sanded off the pinholes and, uh, and I'm still scraping on the primer with an 80 grit right now. I'm still scraping off, just kind of going over the guide coat to make sure Put the car is straight, and uh, when I sand it with the 220 next, it'll look good. So what I'm doing here, as you can see that, you can see how that still has scratches there. I'm sanding this with an 80 grit right now. And the only reason I'm doing this is because, like I said before, I'm trying to use, I'm, I'm going to use the primer to help me straighten the car out. Also, the 80 grit is sharper than a 220, and I do not want to dig the primer off. I just want to try to flatten it out a little bit. This primer's got quite a hard shell on it, so I'm just scraping over it easily. Just scraping over it easy and trying to get out all the little black marks. And all the black marks is the guide coat sitting in areas that don't look good. That's what's going on, sitting in areas that don't look good. So as I get going on this, as I sand this also, I am going every which way possible every which way possible, so the sandpaper cuts nice. Cuts nice. I am not pushing on the block whatsoever. I'm just rubbing over top the primer very quickly. Just make it flat and smooth. I'm not painting over this. I am not anything over top of this. I am blocking off the guide coat to make it look good. Once I get the guide coat taken off with this 80, I'm just scraping the head of it off it. I've done that one over there with an 80. Now I've guide coated again. Now I'm going to check it out with a 220, but I'm going to do this first and just show you how I'm doing it. Show you how I'm doing it. It's just taking off the guide coat, going every which way, trying to make it smooth and flat. That's all I'm trying to do. Like I said, I did the whole car with the DA and by hand, so now at the primer stage I will use a block. And this right here is the most I'm using it, right here. I just want to flatten the fender out, take some primer off, and uh, try to get the scratches out of the, out of the material. Then when I hit it with the 220 on the other side, we'll check it out after that. We'll see what happens. So the other side's already been done with an 80. You can see all the scratches in there. And, what's that, what, and that, what that means is this primer around here and all this primer around here has to come down to that level to get it. That's what it means. So when I say I put two and a half gallons on, you probably think that's a lot of primer. But if I didn't have the product, I, I can't use it. You know, I can't do the job that I want to do. And all I'm doing is straightening off the head of the primer. I'm not digging at it. I'm not anything. I'm just using the 80 grit to straighten it out a little bit. And I probably would use a board file on it. Didn't have a board file 80 right at this present moment. So this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. You can see how that guide coat is disappearing. That's just letting me know I've got, you know, half a straight fender. I'm going to take this one off. You can still see i got scratches there. Come up here a little bit. We'll check this one out. I'm just scraping lightly. This will let me know what has to be fixed and what doesn't have to be fixed. Down here, you come in here and you can see, you can see how I'm hitting there with the sandpaper. 
I'm hitting there with a the sandpaper, but can you see that groove? That has to be fixed. That's what I'll have to fix that. I'm going to take a little bit more off it. I'm not hitting any of the, the flood yet. And what the flood is, is the body fill. I'm not hitting any body fill yet, so I can go further. It's just that I want to be careful. Make sure I don't take off all my product. So you can still see that. Sort of hitting mud right there. So I, I really don't want to go a whole bunch further. Like, so that, that there would have to be fixed. I've got a groove in that. And that's how I'll make it the best I can is with the guide coat. If I can scrub it off without, you know, messing up the, the surface, then I will go for it. If I can't, I leave it and I fix it. So there's going to be a bunch of places that I'm going to have to fix. I already know that. I already know that. This car is going to get probably, it'll be, well, not probably, this car will be primed again in the same, in the same process will be done again. You know, we'll guide coat it, block it out, make it look the best it can. I don't know of, I don't know of, yeah, I don't know how many people has ever filled out an entire car before, but I, I've filled out many cars, the entire car, um, many times, and it's a big job. It is a very big job. So when you, when you get started, you'll understand, like you, when you get started, you'll understand what I'm talking about. You want to get it done as quickly as possible. You'll understand. Because when, once you start sanding, you, you find out how much work it is. That's when most of us stop, <laughs> if you know what I'm trying to tell you. So you really have to have a mindset when you get into this. You really have to have a mindset. I want to move that for you, sweetheart. I don't want you to trip over that. don't want you to trip over that. There. I'm just going to keep going here, and I'll go the other side. Still got some scratches with the guide coat. See, you know, I know that I can't, you can't paint stuff like that. It's still got scratches all in it, right? Still got scratches. So I got to get that primer down at least to that far. This is about the only time that I like using a block is on primer. I, I DA and the big eight inch for filler. I, I try not to get into a block with the filler. It's not something I like to do. And before you know it, I'll be on to another one. <laughs> I want to build another car. Before you know it, I'll be on to another one. Just trying to take it down a little bit further. Lots of product on there. I'm using an 80 grit right now. Just taking the head off the primer. Not hurting it whatsoever. I took use the 80 grit for them for the for the body fill for the pinholes. If you can see, like it's just scratch, it scratches it very heavily. And I like that because it scratches the high spot first. That's what the block's all about, you know. You know, you're scratching the high spot first, and, and that's what I want. Just even a minute little spot like that, see? I can tell I gotta keep going, eh? You can tell that you gotta keep going. Just stuff like that tells you that you have to keep going. That mud there is from pinholes. So we know we're not down that far in the old, the old filler. There's, there's one sponsor I would never say no to is Evercoat. <laughs> Wouldn't you, baby? Ah, that's the, you know, we, you got to use it. It does a good job. And uh, that'd be one person that I would say, sure, I'd love to come aboard. All right. So this, this fender's looking really good. 
didn't do bad for a DA, eh? Didn't do bad for a DA. You know, it's, it's flat, smooth. Not bad. Not bad. We'll do it again, though. We'll do it one more time and make sure. We make sure there's no big dents in it or anything like that. What I'm going to do is this fender here, what I say with this, with this sort of stuff, something like that, something like that, and something like that will be on the next primer. I'm going to prime this thing again. Um, I'm not just going to prime it once and paint it. That's not what, that's not how um, really, really, really nice pairs get done. They just don't get done once. They get done a few times. And I'm going to, I'm going to prime this one more time and probably paint it after that. So I'll have one more prime. Just to make sure, check over, give me a surface that I'm happy with. And once I hit her the second time, I'll probably say that'll be the end of it, and we'll go for it. All right, that's an 80 grit on that fender. I've taken it all off. This is what I'm going to do. I always smell the rags in case there's thinner or something, you know. You can really damage your, you know, something with, if you're not careful, you know, you take a rag and wipe something with thinner on it. If you just paint it, it's, it's not good. It is not good. So as that fender's been done with an 80, I just blocked it easy. Didn't take all the product off it at all. Did not take the product off it at all. Just some of it. I'm going to, sorry about that, sweetheart. Just going to shake up another can here. What will happen is I'll go to the other side. The other side, I just scraped it off with an 80, exactly what I did there. And I, you know, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But when I started scraping the mud off and, and got carried away with the block a little bit, it was some nice just to go easy and, and take my time and scrub the heads off and try to make the fender really look good. And uh, so we'll guide code that again. Oh, don't like that usually, but whatever. We'll leave that like that. So we'll go to the other side. Now I've got a 220. Baby made me a coffee this morning. You gotta love your, yeah. Thank you, sweetheart. I have some 220 here, we got it ordered and pulled over. Napa Know How bring it to us. No, we went over and got it actually. We went over and got it, didn't we, baby? I'm just gonna take, no matter which block I'm using, I'm gonna take this block here. This one here, I scrubbed over it with an 80 grit. Now we'll just scrub over it with a 220. 220. Let's see how it goes. If, if I have a area with any guide coat left on it, that means I have an issue somewhere. I have an issue somewhere. If I can get it polished up, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to polish it. If I can get it polished up without any, without any uh, guide coat showing, uh, I will know that I have a, a good fender. Generally, that's all I'm checking for. I'm checking for issues. And at all times, I'm rubbing my hand over it too, because you can spend a little more time. If you're rubbing like this and you know you feel something, you can spend a little more time on it. On a car like this, um, this car will show very well. And the reason I'm saying it's going to show very well is because it's round. The top's round. The doors are, the, the fenders are round. Uh, around the side is round. Like there's no place that you can look back and, and get a nice eye on it. So this car should look fine. No matter if I did a half a job, it should look fine. Come, come on over and take a look for a second, sweetheart. Okay, what I got going on here. Oh. See that? See that, see that guide coat? Okay, now, 
that's telling me that I got a little tiny low spot there. That surface, that t tells me that, that surface there is lower than that surface all the way around it. So I'm just going to try to, you know, sand around it and see if I can't get it. And that means just take off the surface around it and every once in a while scrub over top of it and see what happens. And that's what we like the, the primer for, if it can. If it, if it takes it, it takes it. If it don't, I'll fix it. And that's how it goes right there. Just keep going like that. And you got to really keep an eye on things. We're at 220. Remember, I sanded this fender first with an 80 grit. It, it's blocking really nice because I have scratched it with an 80 grit. And the 220 can work. With that hard shell on that primer, I would tell you to start your, you know, with, start your primer with an 80 grit. No, you probably shouldn't. I just do it because, because I can. I know, I sort of know what I want, I guess. If you know what you want and what you're going for, you can start it with an 80, no problem at all. But what I'm going, I'm trying to tell you what I'm going for is try to get the flattest pan panel as possible. And generally, the sharpest paper will get you there. And as I get going on that side there, you can still see that guide coat a little bit. I can. You can still see it. I can. Anyways, we just keep working around here. And that's the sort of stuff that you would not see if you did not have a guide coat. That's the sort of stuff right there. It tells the most minute places what you can see. It shows it all. And we go go the other way. And I like to sand the I like to sand the primer and let the, the, the paper do the work. I like to do that just because you get a truer read. You start pushing and start shoving and start digging, you you won't get a true read. You'll you'll end up digging it somewhere and you'll not be happy. Or you'll find a spot. Now, you want to come on over. Keep checking this out and see where we're going here. Looks to me like that's going pretty good up there. That's looking really good, looking really good, looking really good. Look what we got going on here. See, now we got a couple more, right? Now we're just trying to take that surface down and get that one. We'll just keep swiping over the rest of it to make it all one playing field. If we can take every one of those in the primer, be a, it'd, be, it'd be a nice day. It'd be a good day. You know, if you can't get them, what it means is you've got to come back in and get them. That means I would swipe a little filler over top of that. I'm not going to, I think I can get that. But I would swipe a little filler over top of them, and then I would 80 it first, then I would prime it. And the secret is to go all the way around and go every different way. Just keep going around it all over the place. I can remember doing a body job. Um, I had my first, my first experience doing body work. Uh, it was at a place called Rick Salzman's Auto Body. And uh, the, the jobs, were, you know, everything had to be done so quickly, you know, to make money. I mean, to make money, everybody's got to work very hard, I found. I couldn't keep up the pace when I first started. I had, you know, I was just starting. I was trying to make everything the best I could, second-guessing myself. That's where you'll, you'll get a lot of problems is second-guessing yourself. Once, once you, you know, stop second-guessing yourself, um, you can do things fairly quick. But I learned from, you know, that shop, Rick's shop, I learned that things got to be done in a quick matter, you know, if you can't bust your car down and sand it all down in one day and get it in there to paint, well, you had, you know, you, were, you weren't looking so good, <laughs> you know, because everybody else was, um, you know, you really have to go into a body shop and, and fix rust for a while and really see um, how, how quick you have to work to make money. Like, you really can't um, dilly-dally around. You, you really can't. You really have to go for it. And I guess... Places like that is where you learn how to work, how to work. 
And, that, and, and by that, what I mean by that is you're watching everybody else, how fast they're going, how fast they can get it done, and you got to, you know, you got to pull your socks up and do it as quick as they can, or you're not part of the team, are you? <laughs> really? Um, so if you can imagine, uh, I remember when I first worked there, uh, one person would pull in a car, tear it all apart, tear door handles out of it, whatever. That means you have to take your interior out of it somewhat, clean it all down. Generally, you try to get a strip down in one day and get it out to sandblast in one day or, or two days. You at least have to get it out to sandblast. That's a big job, to be honest with you, to get your lights out of it, get all your and trim off it. Then you got to back in the sandblast. Then you're on to welding, you know. And, and when you're doing a car all by yourself, and you get an old rusty truck in there, an old rusty Ford or something, and uh, you're trying to get that truck done in two weeks, you're moving because you have to sand that whole truck three, four, three, four times, plus fix all the rust, plus sandblast it, plus put it back together. When he painted it, you know, come out the, shop, come out the garage door, or not come out the garage door, it stayed in the paint room, and then you put it together. You were, you were expected to put that car back together in one day. And if that's where you learn um, how fast or you should be working. Uh, I don't know if, I don't know. That's, there's something I don't know. I don't know. I've never worked at a at a, any other shop really, that, other than than that. I worked at a few other places, but um, that was quite yeah, it was quite vigorous. You had to be a good body man to work there, work fast, and and be able to do a whole car in a couple of weeks by yourself. And uh, you ask you anybody asks themselves if they can do a body job, a whole body job on a car by themselves in two weeks. Ask yourself if you can do a body job by yourself in two weeks. Or on a rusty old car, get her all welded up. And I'm not talking about patching it or tic tacking it. I'm talking about welding it up, grinding it, fiberglassing it, fixing it, and sending it out the door. And not a restoration, but a complete all around the bottom of the doors, everywhere. If you can do that, I would say you, you could call yourself a body man. If you could do a whole car in two weeks, you can call yourself a body man. You most certainly can. And how good you are, that's, that's all up to you, I guess. But if you can do a whole car, sand it down, put the mud on it, fix it, put it back together, and give it back to the customer in two weeks, I, I would say you're definitely, you're, you're a body man. You're a good body man. Uh, if you cannot, it's just, I, I guess that, I guess, what, what do I say? Um, you just... Other people out there that are trying to do it faster, I guess. And I'm not sure what I'm trying to say, but I just know that's what I was taught or that's what I learned. I guess what I'm saying is you only know what you're shown. Isn't that right, baby? You only know what you're shown. But I was shown, uh, I was shown by most everybody that the faster you do it, the better they like you. <laughs> right? That's what I was shown. You know, and I know a lot of people don't like the orbital, um, say they can't get it straight. Well, it's hard to say that when, you, when you're not using it all the time and you're using the board file or you're using this or using that. It's pretty hard to say when you're not. It's almost, it's easier to judge because you don't have to think. If you've never used it, how would you know? If you know what I mean, if you've used it a couple times and you couldn't get it straight, well, you wouldn't know. Um, you didn't take the time to learn how to use it. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. You didn't take the time to learn how to use it. Uh, I just find if you do not jump on it or get on it, you don't get it done as quick. You can see that there, baby, if you want to come over and take a look. Okay, on this panel, as I'm sanding this with 220 and yakking, as I'm sanding with 220 and yakking, let's take a look at it. I can see over back here, look, pinhole. Got to fix those. So I'll have to come back in and get those. Right? Come back in and get them. Don't see any scratches. I don't see any black spots where the guide coat's on. Oh, look. A couple little black spot there, a little black spot going on. Give that a swipe.
still all kinds of material on there. That's good. Get another one. Also, uh, material is a big thing and a big cost when you're doing a vehicle. Material is a big cost. Um, what do I say? Um, where I, I know material is a big cost, and I'm talking about the people like myself. I'm not talking people with a bunch of money that can buy anything and have anything. I'm talking about people that want a vehicle and cannot afford it. That's, that's who I connect with. And when it comes to doing that sort of stuff, I would buy the cheapest fill. That's why I got rid of the putty, because I didn't want to buy it. That's where I got rid of uh, prime wash. I use Windex for pre-wash for painting the cars. Um, with the grat wax and grease remover, I've canceled that out, and I use Spray 9. Every product that I use works, because the proof is in the pudding. 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 That's how, and that's how I would try to well, do the job cheaper than normal. Also, with the with the different kinds of sandpaper I use, I've only got 40, 80, 20, and 220, and 400. So there's four different pieces of sandpaper that I use to do a urethane paint job. If you want a base clear paint job, well then you're looking at a finer grit. But a lot of people uh, will. I sprayed most of the cars over the season with urethane. I think uh, seven of them were urethane and only one was base clear. And uh, we were happy with them and we're still happy with them. I used uh, Nason's paint, which was the cheapest product they have. I still use Nason paint. Um, it's the cheapest product they have. Um, I still use it. Um, what I find with with that, uh, you have to you have to got a guy or value shade. You have to value shade, and this is where this is where everybody's epoxy comes in. This is where epoxy comes in. When I get the car all painted, I might have a couple places showing through. Okay, I might have a couple. You do not want to throw paint over something that some something is showing through. You want your car all one color. So what epoxy is for is you come in and you spray it all one nice coat, get it all one color, and you do not have to sand it to paint over top of it. That's what epoxy's for. That's what epoxy's for. Be able to paint without sanding it. So when the car is done, uh, we will put a coat of, they call, they, everybody calls it sealer. Uh, I'm gonna use epoxy. And I'm gonna value shade it with epoxy and then I will paint it one color. Also, when you're doing stuff like this, it's always nice to finish the whole car and then primer at once. Not always run into the primer and throwing a little primer on this and doing a little bit of that. It's always nice to finish the whole car before you start throwing the primer on. I know it's a hard thing to do because you want to see what it looks like. But just, you have to think of the material that you could be wasting. If you don't do it all at once. Come on over here, baby, for a second. I want to show you. You can see, see the guide coat here. You watch this. You can see when I'm sanding it, how, the, how I'm sanding the 80 grit scratches away. You can see them. All right, you can see them. You can see how I'm sanding them away. Can you see how they're going? Can you see them right there, the fine scratches? See them? There were 80 grit scratches in that primer. That's how fine that guide coat is. And that's what you gotta look for and pay attention for while you're sanding this. I very well could uh, sand this down. I could paint this probably tomorrow if I wanted to, if I wanted to. It probably wouldn't be 100%, but I could just keep going. I could, uh, I could uh, guide coat this again after a 220 it and then I get 400 and I could paint it and if I want it to I could get her done I could paint it in the next couple days but we're not going to do that on this we want to take a little bit of time and make sure that it looks good you know you got 
anybody, anybody watching me do this, you'll have to ask yourself, you'll have to ask yourself, man, could I build my woman a car? You'll have to ask yourself. Huh? And, the, and then still go in and eat, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Have you ever painted your woman a car? Have you ever? You have to ask yourself. It's a big obligation when you say, baby, I'm going to build your car. It's a big obligation. It's a big obligation to say, I'm going to paint your car. Or I'm going to fix your car. But how about, I'm going to build you a Bugatti, baby. How about that? Put that in your brain and smoke it. Mine's smoking already. Yeah, I'm going to build you Bugatti. You must have thought I was the biggest bullshitter on the face of the earth, did you, baby? Huh? It's getting closer, isn't it? Getting closer. There's going to be one of these days you're going to be driving it up in the road. And you know what I'm going to say? I told you so. I'm going to build you Bugatti. Build your Bugatti. If you've never built a car from scratch or built a car from nothing, you'll have to ask yourself, of all the pieces that go into a car, um, which ones do you know how to do? You know, you got a brake pedal, you got a gas pedal, you got brakes, you got you got a transmission, you got you got a rear end, you got a front end, you got steering, you got you got rack and pin, you got there's just so many things. You got an interior, you got seats, you got steering wheel, you got a gas tank. Uh, there's so many things that you have to do. And I've done it so many times, I'm getting used to it. I've done it so many times. So this will be, how many cars will this be in the last two, three years? How many cars? Huh? We've built quite a few cars. I've had a lot of help with the team, but we've built quite a few cars in the last couple of years. We've built quite a few cars. And this is just another one I can add to my resume. If anybody wants to, you know, get where I'm at, you just have to go in the garage and go to work. Basically it. You have to build the car and show them. And once you build that car, build another car and show them. Once you build that car, build another car and show them. That's what has to happen. It's just a lot of hard work and a lot of effort. A lot of hard work and some effort. In it, baby. Yeah! But you can see how I'm polishing this fender off. That's what I'm doing is I'm polishing it. You can see where I didn't touch it yet. What I use for pre-wash, if, if I was going to paint this, I would wash it off with Windex. I'm just going to wipe it off now. I use spraying the rag, spraying that, spraying the car, spraying the rag. Come on, Chad, come on. Got carried away, I did. You you watch that dissipate. Save yourself. $80 or $100, buy yourself some Windex and wash your car off and you, and you can paint it. Now when this dissipates, we'll look it over and see what we got. Right there, you can see right there, guide coat has not been touched, has not been sanded yet. You can see that? 
right? You can still see scratches in there, right? See the guide coat coming up there, you still see a little bit. See, you can see scratches here. Can't have that. And scratches. We got some scratches up there. We got some little bit of guide coat showing there. And there's a little bit all over. We'll just wait for a minute. Wait for a minute. Let it dissipate. See it looking dissipating really nice. Then you can wipe it off. Uh, that's pre wash or dumping it on a rag. It's all over the ground. Nice little container. It's all, it's, I don't know, four or five dollars. Probably a thing. I guess the reason I was talking about uh, the other body shop when I worked there. It just shows you how quickly you should work, you know. Um, yeah, you should work. You should work quickly. Try to get it done as quick as possible. That's in my brain. Quick as possible. That's in my brain. That's how I uh, do it. That's how I was taught. Now I'm going to come in here. You can see on the guy coat on the edge. There's guy coat all along top of here. Guy coat along top of here. Guy coat along top of here. I guess what I'm trying to stress is you should work hard when you do something like this. Get her done. You know. Really get that hand moving. You know, make believe you're doing something. I'm just going to hand sand this real quick, and then we'll take a look at it. Now, I must stress something. Just because, just because I've sanded with 220 with a block does not mean I can't guide coat it and block it again with 220. Does not mean that. You know what I mean? I can do it if I want to. It all depends on what kind of job you want. So after I get this done, I can guide coat it in 220 again. I might even get out the old board, board, uh, the board uh, sander. You know, the long board or whatever they call it. I might even get that out in 220 with the guy coat on because I can. I just haven't yet, but I can. And I might even might, you never know. All depends. It feels good. Now. If you want to take a look, well, this fender has been sanded down with an 80 grit with the guide coat. Take the pinholes out of it. Then it was sanded with a 220 with the guide coat. And then what I'm telling you is I can come back in there again and I can guide coat it again. I can do a 220 or I can do it 400. I could even go back to 80 if I want to. If I feel like something's not right, I can go back to 80 and straighten it out. And then guy coat hit with 220. And what I guess what that tells you is that I put enough product on it that I can get the job done. If I did not come in and put enough product on it, you can't do anything. And also, the time that it took for, that, for me to put the, the primer on it, and if you subtract the time when someone puttied the whole car, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about at all, you, can, you know how much longer it would take that person. You would know if you're a putty spreader. If you spread putty on your whole car, you know what it takes to sand a car down. So there you go. i got to half decent looking front fender for you. If we want to look it over real close, we can pick it apart. We got some pinholes down. We got three or four little pinholes down there. I'll grab those. It looks really good to be honest with you. There's no, yeah, looks really good. All the lips have to be done again. Haven't done those, haven't primed them. And that's how it goes. That's how I'll do the whole car. Keep going. Okay. Karina and Roland, give me the Sharpies. They're professional, aren't they? Industrial. Industrial Sharpies, thank you very much. We're just going to, you know, thank people that send stuff. 
Uh, Gary D. Britton. Give me the Bristol board. He's bought me two boxes of Bristol board, and I love it. I love it because I can go there and get a piece. I don't have to run around the garage trying to find a piece of paper or grab, you know, Jolene's dress offer and cut it out and make a pattern. I don't have to do that anymore. Do it, baby. Don't have to do that anymore. Tony and Joel for the live chat, the mass fund. What? Tony and Joe, live chat. They donated. I think even Salsa donated. A few people have donated, have they not? And we want to thank you for that. Um, yeah, so that's basically, that's the little thing I go by. And you can repeat any process you want. You can repeat any process you want as many times as you want. So as I just shown you, I've blocked the fender I rubbed over with an 80 grit with the, with the guide coat on it. I just guide coated it and 220'd it. Now I can guide coat it again. I can guide coat this again. And I can sand it whenever I want to. And I can sand it with any grit I want to. I can go, I, I don't want to go for a 40 on that, nowhere near it. But I, I would go back to an 80, no problem. And the 220 and the 400. I would go any grid on that that I need to make it go where I want it to go. And I'm going to guide coat it again. And that means when I put the guide coat on, that means I'm going to do it again. <laughs> Done it, baby. That means I'm going to do it again. Yeah. So that's guide coated. That's a 220. I can, I can block that again with a 220, or I can hit it with a 400, or I can come in here with an 80 grit and, and don't like something and scrub it down a little bit and then guide coat again, do 20. I got 220. I've got product on the car. So that's what I'm doing. I'm running around doing that. And I'm just trying to stress to everybody, you know, you should work as hard as possible, or the people that are getting into this. If you're going to work somewhere, I guess that's what I'm talking about. You should work as hard as possible um, and become as good as possible so you can get a job anywhere, if you know what I'm trying to tell you. Get a job anywhere, especially if you're a good worker. Get a job anywhere. And, and that's the main thing to have, in your, to have in your pocketbook when you're getting into the store and stuff where you're working and stuff. Be a good worker, you'll have a job for the, to the end of time. Have, be a good worker and you'll have a job to the end of time. I've never actually put, well, I never have. I've never put an open sign on my garage door since I've been here. Never. There's never been an open sign here. And I guess that says something, doesn't it? Hard work pays off. Have a good one, everybody. I'm just going to keep blocking on the car. Just keep blocking on the car, keep sanding it down. Um, once I get done a panel, um, I'll, I'll remember it in my head, and then I'll come back and guide code it and do it again. When I get somewhat satisfied and I've used all the primer up, the material that I've sprayed on the car to flatten and help straighten and polish, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to put another, probably another couple gallons on the car and then I'm going to finish it off um, to paint. But right now, um, this is the time where I'm trying to fix any imperfections, make it the best it can. Um, uh, beautiful cars don't happen just in one shot. Uh, we have to remember that this whole car did not appear, uh, it was built, this whole car was made, and you have to fill the complete car to make it look right. Um, there's weld marks there, 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 there's weld marks there. Um, you have to fill the whole car, and that's ju just what I'm doing. And uh, I hope that we'll all be happy when we're done. No, it doesn't really much matter if we're all happy. It matters if Jolene's happy. And then I'll know I'll be happy. Signing off, YouTubers. I want to thank you all for watching. Like and share. I was saying to Jolene this, this morning that um, it's really it's, it's kind of cool that people go on the live chat even before we air. People are communicating with each other. I think there's camaraderie coming between people. I'm just getting on there earlier to talk to each other, which is fantastic. 
Fantastic. These people probably never knew each, each other in their entire life, but now that we're all building this tech car together, makes friends, makes camaraderie, you know what I mean? Um, I like it when we all keep it, you know, uh, classy. Nobody, you know, nobody wants to be made fun of or nobody wants to be torn down. Everybody should know that. And if you know that, that means that you should not do that. So if someone is, you know, don't, nobody tears anybody down on the page, I find. I find everybody's pretty good. And that's the main thing. Everybody treats everybody with respect. We're all in this game together. That's basically it. I'm, I'm showing you how I do it and what I'm doing. And sometimes I try to motivate. Sometimes I tell you things that um, don't even matter. But work hard and, and uh, you'll always have a job. I guess that's my advice today. Work hard and you'll always have a job. I've always been taught that everywhere as I went, um, right from the auto body shop to the to the feed mill, to the hanging chickens, to whatever I did, I was taught to work hard. Have a good one.